Hi, I'm Willie with H5 Technology and welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. I appreciate every single one of you. And now what we're going to do is we are going to start our Synology journey. You know, we've done a little bit on Synology, but uh, I reached out to Synology and they were nice enough to send me a couple of DS218 pluses. They preloaded the drives, the memory, the whole bit. I don't know what's in here. They send them to me. So we've got one. We're going to set it up. Then one of these is going to go to Tim's house. And we're going to show you all the cool network replication you can do. We're also going to show you how to set up your site-to-site -site VPN so that things like your phone system and your Synology and things like that can work between sites. So this is the DS218+. Plus. It's still got the plastic on the front. So I'm going to take that off. And uh, just we'll look at the specs on this guy. I took the, the front off here. So you can see there are two discs in there. I don't know what size they are. Um, over here, you've got a USB 3. You've got a status, a LAN, disc 1, disc 2. You've got, uh, what is that? You've got your power. And then I think, I don't know if that C is the copy button or what. And then on the back, you've got a eSATA connector. You've got two USBs. You have a single Ethernet, you've got power, and then you have the Kensington lock. <laughs> you got this big fan right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and plug this into the network. I'm going to let it get fired up. We're going to use the Synology Web Assistant to find this guy. We're going to set it up and see uh, what it's all about. So I'll be right back as soon as I get this plugged in. All right, so it's plugged in. It's booting. It's just off screen here. So as soon as it boops, boots, boops, boots up, uh, should get a beep. The front light is uh, blinking and I heard the drives kick on. So as soon as this guy is ready, uh, we will take a look at the, the web assistant because it'll find this and if the DSM is not loaded or anything, it'll do all that for us. So we'll walk through that. We'll be right back. All right, so we got the magic beep. So I refreshed the site and it's find.synology.com. And so what this is doing is it's searching our local network for any available Synology devices. And right here it shows us uh, the disk station it found it. This is a super accurate representation. Uh, it is a DS218+. Plus. Here's the IP address and it says it's ready. So we're going to go ahead and connect. And right here it wants us to go ahead and set up all the the good stuff here. So this is going to be, um, we'll call this H5 DS218-1. And then the other one, when we get it over on Tim's side, will be dash two. So we're going to put in a username and password. And we're going to go back in later and do the quick connect and all that. So we're going to un check that for now. So now it says it's preparing the storage space. And I have absolutely no idea how much uh, storage is in this yet. So it says congratulations. We've set up our administrator account and we are going to install important updates and we're going to leave this schedule. We'll go in and adjust all this. I just want to get this up and going here. And we're going to uh, we're going to do a whole section on the quick connect, so we're going to skip that for now. And we're going to skip the package installation. And we'll send anonymous statistics over. So it looks like they already had the DSM installed on this. So um, the DSM help comes up automatically. We're going to check. Don't show that box anymore. Now over here we have a system health and a resource monitor. This is standard, comes loaded. But let's uh, open up our control panel and go over to update and restore. So the version of DSM that came loaded on this was DSM 6.1.3 and 6.1.6 .6 is available for download. So before we do that, let's go over and let's uh, take a look at the storage manager. And it looks like there are two drives. We've got a, we've got a total of 3.5 terabytes. So let's actually take a look. Let's take a look at the disk. So it looks like there's two iron wolves. These are four terabytes. So the volume, it's Synology Hybrid RAID with data protection of one disk, fault tolerance. So 
this is using the Synology Hybrid RAID. So these are, uh, once again, these are four terabyte drives, but you know when you do the math, you get 3.6. So we've got four usable and we are protected. We've got redundancy. So that's good. Let's see what other packages were installed. Yep, we agree. Okay, so this is kind of the, the normal stuff that gets installed by default. Um, we are going to go ahead and download the new DSM. Now, when you would have first taken your Synology out of the box, if it wasn't already ready to go like this one is, it's going to find it on the network, and then it's going to install DSM. It takes about 10 minutes, and then you're going to walk through everything. We walk through setting up the administrator account and all that. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to download this. And it's going to go out. It's going to download DSM. You can see we're at 20%. I don't know how fast this is going right now. We should get an update 56%. So this download is going to go very, very quickly. So once this is done, it's going to say it's ready to update. We'll say update now. It gives us a standard warning. You cannot power this off or shut it down during that update. Do we want to continue? Yes. And then it says it's going to take about 10 minutes. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to let this guy um, do his thing and reboot and we'll be right back. Okay, so the DSM update is finished. The unit rebooted and we got our beep and then our login screen is here. So we're going to go ahead and log in. Once again, our system health and resource monitor. You can you can take this off if you want. I'm going to leave it on just so we can kind of see how this thing reacts when we do certain things. And I don't even have to draw your attention to it. You're going to be able to just see what's going on. Looks like there's another DSM update available. Doesn't make uh, yeah update one. So we'll go ahead and we'll download that. It's always a good idea to make sure that your DSM is up to date. So we're going to go ahead and update that. We're going to get the same warning. We're going to go ahead and pause this again and we'll be right back. Oh, update finished. So I didn't even have to, we didn't have to go very far, did we? All right, so first thing you're going to see is it still says we have an update. Let's see what's going on here. This update was from April 11th. Yeah, we should be up to date. Okay, then over here We've got some packages. You can see that this, this thing's moving along pretty snappy. So we're going to go ahead and tell it to go ahead and update all of these uh, packages that are running. Um, and in the, in the meantime, let's bring up the info center on this guy. So it's got an Intel Celeron J3355 running at 2 gigahertz with two cores. It's got 2 gigs of RAM. It's going out to Google for its time. It knows we're in the central time zone. So we should bring up, anyway, our packages are now up to date, but you're going to notice that right now we're talking on port 5000 and everything that's sent between the workstation and DSM is in clear text. So we need to make sure that we're encrypting all of our communication. When we come into control panel for the first time, you're going to see just a few icons and we want to click advanced mode and that's going to give us a lot more, um, a lot more options to work with and you can take a look at everything that's going on here now we are going to get into a lot of these a lot of these options the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go over here to network we're going to go to DSM settings and we're going to tell it to automatically redirect HTTP connections to HTTPS and we're going to enable HTTP2 and we will go ahead and apply that it's going to restart the web server and then we're going to start being served DSM over port 5001 and HTTPS, which is what we want. It'll take just a second to restart this. All right, so it forced us over to 5001 HTTPS. You see we get the connection not private because we don't have a valid certificate yet or we've got a self-signed certificate, we are going to be taking care of that as well. Real quick, let's hop over to the Synology site. So this does have hardware-based encryption, and it says we can do 113 megabytes a second encrypted reading and 112 megabytes per second encrypted 
encrypted writing. That's pretty good. It'll do 4K Ultra HD video transcoding. So that's a 64-bit processor. It's dual uh, dual core, 2 gigahertz, burstable up to 2.5 gigahertz. It does have the hardware encryption. Looks like we can uh, do transcoding to H.265 with a max resolution of 4K and 30 frames per second. It looks like we can take it up to 6 gigs, and you can do two 12 terabyte hard drives, and not sure if you're really interested in anything else here. That gives you, you know, a lot of ideas about what's going on with this. So the next thing we need to do is we need to put a static IP address on this. So we're going to come back in here, we're going to go to network network interface we've got the single LAN we're gonna edit this we're gonna click get manual configuration now we already know I want I want this box at 250 everything else is filled in from DHCP we're gonna leave it the way it is click OK now it's should redirect us to the new IP address we'll see what happens it'll take a second to apply these network settings And it did it did redirect us to the new IP address. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add a few packages so that we can get ready to start doing these videos. So we're going to come in here. And here is uh, one really quick way, before we get into that, to be able to see what packages your Synology can run. If you come into the Package Center and you click All, it's going to show you everything that is compatible with your Synology unit. So all of these packages that are available will run on this DS218+. Plus. So to get a lot of these packages that we want to use, if you're just experimenting with this, you're just getting started, you don't need to buy a huge Synology setup. You can buy this DS218, throw a couple four terabyte uh, hard drives in it and go to town. So we are going to use a lot of these. We're going to use Active Backup for Server. We're going to use Active Directory. We're going to use a lot of these. So, But the first one that we are going to install, we're going to install Hyper Backup and we're going to install Hyper Backup Vault. Those will be the first two things that we're going to concentrate when we go um, backing up to, to Tim's house. So those first two things are going to go ahead and install. We've got a static IP address. And I think for this video, this is about where I want to keep it. So in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to deal with an SSL certificate and some of those things. And then we're going to get connected to Tim and we're going to start backing up across the network. So we'll create a file share. We'll copy some files to it. We'll set up uh, the backup across the network and we'll we'll show you how that all works we'll put it on a schedule we'll do all of those things that's what's coming up in the next video so if you like this video please give me a thumbs up please subscribe please comment and share please follow me on twitter and instagram if you need consulting with synology grandstream ubiquity networks networking voice over ip security in general go to h5llc.com down there fill out the contact form and someone will get back with you as soon as possible if you want to talk to us live, you can click the link for our Discord channel down there. Charlie's our admin. admin. He does an awesome job. If you would like to buy any of the products you see here on the channel, I do have an Amazon affiliate shop down there, and you can buy everything that you see us use here. And as always, I appreciate you, and we'll see you in the next video.